my name is Philip Benz from Buckmaster Office Solutions. I work in the IT department here and I help put together document management solutions for our customers. Today I'm going to be going through a demo of a pretty typical account table setup. I'll be going through and explaining the system itself and many of the functions within the system. Let's dive in. Right now, what you can see on the screen is an example of the home page of the DocuWare system. We will start from the top here. Um, we have document trays. Um, within document trays, it's essentially like a file box on your desk currently you're probably using to help sort out documents that are coming into you and um, to be processed in a specific manner. Um, so this would be very similar to that. You'd have the documents come into the various document trays. We could have multiple document trays um, depending on what all functions we're designing. Um, right now you can see there's a purchase orders and an invoice document tray. And um, when we get to the full demo, I'll show you kind of how that's working and how that encompasses um, within the, the accounts payable processing. From here we have a search button. The search button, um, this is essentially going to be how you search for documents. Um, you'll have various index fields that you can sort by or filter by. You can put in as much or as little data as you want. Um, the more data you fill out, the more narrow the filter will become and be able to find things with ease. Aside from that, we also have a list on the top here. We click on lists, you can see I've built out a couple lists. Essentially what the lists do is helps um, expedite the searching process of documents. So you can set up different lists depending on the stage of the invoice, um, the different statuses of files, so that people can easily see where something is and be able to search for those documents and questions. Um, it's very similar to going in and searching for a document, except it's uh, basically a predefined search criteria that allows you to see those documents at whim um, very easily by just going under the list. Tasks, um, tasks are gonna be assigned tasks to specific individuals. Um, it could be approval of an invoice. It could be uh, making payment of an invoice and confirming that it's been paid. It could be various different tasks within the organization, depending on what needs to happen with the document. It could be routing for a manager approval, depending on if it was maybe over the approved amount, and now it has to get assigned by a manager. Various tasks like that, and something we would definitely work with the customer to make sure everything's routing exactly the way they intend and would benefit the company. We also have folders here. We click on folders. Essentially, this is very similar to how you would search for something in Windows today. Um, for a file, it can be broken down in folders and can automatically kind of create these folders depending on the files that you're storing in there. Here, um, we have like a last name for employee files. Go inside there. You can also um, see that the person's name, so if we had multiple people with the same last name, it would come up here. Keep on drilling down. Now different documents for the employee that we're searching for. Maybe we want HR only documents. We have an I-9 or emergency contact form. So it's essentially just drilling down into the documents through a folder view as opposed to searching specifically. I typically tend to favor the search. It's um, much quicker to just put in a couple keywords and search that way as opposed to drilling down folders. But there is some instances where the folders comes to play and can be very helpful. All right, and forms here um, can be used for various like online type um, forms for either like request of time off, it could be an employee application, could be an employee onboarding form. What I'm going to show you is kind of an employee onboarding for, form demonstration. It can be used to essentially um, allow a new employee to fill out their pertinent information. As you can see, I've kind of pre populated this form and auto populate it on the various forms that are required for the organization. Um, if we take this, see it's all filled out, hit submit. You can see once we hit submit, what it actually does is it will go in and auto-populate the forms that are required. 
go under search, do a blank search under employee search. You can see now we have an I-9 emergency contact form and a W-4. We double click on one of these. You can see it's actually been populated with the information from the other form. Go to the emergency contact, it's been populated, and W-4, it's been populated as well. So it really helps um, quickly allow forms of various types that require the exact same information to be populated to be populated once and auto populated to the other forms. All right, and now we're going to go through an actual quick demonstration of how the storage and um, processing of an invoice would go in the system. So we have numerous ways of actually getting documents into the system. What I'm going to show you right now is our drag and drop functionality. So if we take a document that we're looking to store in here, we can actually drag it right into here and it's going to pull it right into the file. What it's going to go through now is also what's called intelligent indexing. I will have a video put up for that explains the intelligent indexing process a little bit better. But um, essentially, it's looking at the document, seeing if it's seen it before. And if it has, it will go through and actually index the information automatically without you having to go in there and type in all the information yourself. It's a very slick process that um, makes it extremely efficient to enter the documents. We go to the store option here. We can go accounts payable purchase order. And here you can see that it's pulled all the information already from the invoice because this has been trained previously with the intelligent indexing. So all we have to do is just make sure everything looks okay. And if everything's good, just hit the store button. From here, now we have the actual purchase order in the system. You can see the list lit up here with the one. We go under lists. We now have a pending PO here that's showing in the list field so that anybody in the organization with permissions to that list could see exactly which POs are pending and their status within the system. We go back in here. We can now go in and store the invoice. This invoice, drag it into the document. It does its intelligent indexing. So other methods, like I was stating earlier, of getting documents in the system, we also have this import button here, which can be used to actually browse out and just pull the document directly that way. Um, we have the drag and drop, like I showed you. And we also have um, ability to put in a connector within Outlook to where you could store documents direct, straight from an email. And you would just hit the store button within the email itself. And we also have one other option, which I'm going to show in a little bit here as well, but it's basically going to be called document processing. And we can actually monitor a folder on your network that can be used to um, either connect with your scanner, so your large format scanner, and be able to scan straight into the system, which makes it very convenient to get documents within the system. So we see the invoices in here. If we double click on it, we can see the invoice on the right hand pane, which gives you all sorts of control options within the tools, such as print. Um, you have share by email, you got the show index entry, so you can see what's been indexed on it already. You can download the documents. You can check if document has been changed. You can activate, deactivate document overview, which this would be basically showing it in page view or single page view. You have a show full text search, so you can actually search for information within the document, which will highlight where that word is. You have um, the one-click indexing, which will is essentially the intelligent indexing and being able to click on documents, use the OCR to index documents. You have the copy text to clipboard. You have different display options, depending on how you want to display the document. You could zoom in or zoom out to specific percentages. You can rotate the images. You can sharpen the image, which is on by default. You can merge layers if you've also created annotations on it and you wanted to 
um, basically flatten the image so that those annotations cannot be changed anymore. And you have automatic image correction as well here. So the annotations, that's another way of getting data within the system. If you select the text box, put a field in here, you can actually sum text, test text here. Type in whatever you want. At this point, we could actually move that to somewhere else if we wanted to, but very convenient for putting notes on documents. And we can also delete this at this point with hitting the X. So to store this invoice again, we just go to select the document on the left, hit store, invoice. Again, the intelligent indexing has already picked up all the data, so we don't need to do any entry. Just confirm that everything looks okay and hit store. Now we've got the purchase order and the invoice in the system. Um, the invoice, you can see it's brought in a task for us and it's also changed the list view. If we go to the list view here, we can see under pending approval, we have a, a new invoice that's pending for approval. What that means is our, our invoice approver has now received the task, which you can see here, which says invoice approval. You double click on it, brings up the invoice, and you see on the bottom here is your options for the invoice. You can approve it or decline. These options can be as many as you want. Um, we can have various different options depending on what the situation needs. At this point, what we have is just a approve and decline. Um, when you hit approve, you can see the different line items that were added to this. If everything looked good, we could hit confirm. And now that invoice has been approved. At this point, if we go back to the list view, it sometimes takes a minute, but there we go. It's been removed from the pending approval, and now it's actually under the pending payment screen. So other people would be able to see, okay, which ones are waiting for payments, which ones are waiting for approval, and be able to very easily see what that status is. So a task would have been sent to the payment processor to verify that the payment's been made. If you look here under tasks again, we got an invoice payment. They can double click on it, check on it. You can see that it's been stamped from our past approval. It shows the username, which is my email address. It shows the date and invoice approval approved and the total and the current PO remaining amount so that they can verify that the PO actually had an amount remaining to be paid. If everything looked good by the payment processor and they have paid the invoice, they can select on paid and now confirm. Throughout this whole process too, um, the invoices are sending emails throughout the, the system so that people can see exactly where the status is. So if we go in here, we can pull up one of these emails. You can see invoice for Microsoft Corporation is waiting for payments and various other options will be coming in depending on the status of the invoice. So the system is capable of sending these automatic email notices out for different stages and it's very convenient for everybody to be able to see what stage things are at without necessarily having to open up the system and at this point if you go back to lists it's no longer in the pending payments section it's been cleared and everything's been done with that if we go to the pending po's it is also cleared because there is nothing remaining left on that po and it has been closed within the system that is essentially a, a very quick um, introduction of how the PO and invoice processing can work in the system. We do have another method that I wanted to show you as well, which is the document processing, which can actually be used to monitor folder within the system to actually pull in those invoices automatically. One example of this is if you have a certain vendor that sends you invoices all the time and the invoice is always the same type style of invoice. We can actually automatically pull the invoice right into the system without any type of indexing um, information needed by the, the end user. What we're gonna do here is we'll select all the invoices in here, drag them, actually we'll do a copy and paste, select all the, copy, 
and paste it right into here. What you'll see is they'll show up here in a, for a minute, and as soon as the system starts grabbing them, you'll start, see them disappear, which they have. Now the system is going in and actually document processing the documents, and will start appearing within the system here momentarily. We just wait maybe 30 seconds. There we can see it's now starting to process them. They're all coming into the system. And now you can see some tasks are actually showing up. What I have here in this processing is a task that actually goes in to you click on here. You can see invoice approval and manager approval. What I've set up is anything over $200 has to get a manager approval, and anything lower than that just goes to a standard approval processing. So the system is capable of setting certain criteria on where it goes for approvals to where it can get routed to specific people depending on different checks on the invoice and different lists on the invoice and send different various emails depending on those statuses as well. So with this, you can see it's all already picked up like the customer, the invoice name, the total, all that information is automatically being pulled in without us even having to key anything in there. We hit approve. We can actually approve this invoice. And same goes with any of these other ones with the manager approval has the same approval option, but it would be routing to a manager instead of a standard accounts payable processor. We actually go through the search function. We can also search for these documents. We go back to document process default search. You can see you can drop down on the document type, you can drop down on the company, you can drop down on the customer. So if we only wanted to see one of these customers, we could sort by just that. Otherwise, if we leave a blank search, we can search for that. And you can see all the documents that were stored in the system and um, their appropriate indexing information. That is our accounts payable processing in a nutshell. The system is highly capable of being um, customized in various fashions. The workflow tasks can be as simple or as extensive as you need them to be. Um, some processes need to have a good 10 or more task levels that it needs to go to. And depending on the documents and depending on the processing that's required, goes to different individuals. Thank you for attending our webinar. And